Here's my heart, Lord. How may I pray with you? How may I pray with you? These six words are really the cornerstone, the centerpiece of the unity movement. It is certainly part of the unity culture as it began over 130 years ago. In 1889, the co-founder of the unity movement, Myrtle Fillmore, got together with some friends and acquaintances to pray, to hold sacred space, to lovingly listen, and to affirmatively pray. Now, it was so popular that the group began to expand. They changed their names a few times. And by 1907, they added the telephone. In 1927, it became a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week prayer ministry. And today, 134 years later, they answer two to three million prayer requests every day, simply asking the question, how may I pray with you today? Now, prayer is the centerpiece of the unity movement. Prayer is that practice, that application of raising our consciousness, and it's, it's so fundamental to what we believe in unity, but it's not just any prayer. Yeah, the, the headset device isn't working for Paul over here. Maybe, Paul, if you have a chance. Well, where was I? <laughs> Praying. Who thought? It's a centerpiece of what we do. But it's not just any prayer, it's affirmative prayer. So what is affirmative prayer? And what does it really mean? Well, in shortcut, affirmative prayer is how we get into oneness consciousness. It's how we get into that state of consciousness where we're living from that um, every moment of the day. I love Eric Butterworth in one of his books, The Late Minister and Author. He wrote, metaphysics is a way of thinking and a way of praying. Because prayer is that sense of, is a higher form of thinking. So Butterworth said this, he says, prayer is conditioning your life with the activity of God the activity of spirit, the energy, the movement, the flow of the allness of life, causing a change in your tendency and your consciousness and your awareness. Now, that's a little different than the prayer we grew up with, isn't it? It's not beseeching. It's not asking. It's really just affirming this is where we're at. This is who I am. It's affirming that truth so that we can live more from that consciousness. As Butterworth says, so you can acknowledge that which already is. You're already that. There's nothing you need to do to become that. You just have to switch it on. A pr affirmative prayer gets us into the realization that God, that spirit, that allness is present. It is the allness, it is the allness that is within you. And that you and I exist as an eachness of that allness. Now, I love the metaphor that Butterworth uses, and I've adopted it as my own. So someday I'm going to stop quoting him. I'll just say, that was me. <laughs> Probably not. But he talks about God as within us. That, that energy, that, that allness is within you, like the ocean is in the wave. Yes? There's no separation. It's just the wave thinking it's, a, it's its own thing. And each of us are the expression of the ocean as a wave. So the allness of God, the allness of the universe, of life, love, and wisdom, whatever you want to call it, right? Divine mind, isness, the universe, the force, Abba, Father, loving presence, is the allness of of life. And you're it. Tag. We live in divine mind. We live in divine mind. And affirmative prayer is the practice that helps us get into the consciousness of that which already is. 
it helps us get into the consciousness of living from that higher self, of living from that, we might call it the Christ consciousness or your divine spark or your better self. You, I like to call it my authentic self. That's really who I am. That's the essence of me. And affirmative prayer is not trying to get more from life, to get more love from God, to get more stuff. But instead, it's helping you to know your oneness. Now, through this, and, and raising consciousness, raising a consciousness. And what does that really mean? Well, in unity, we talk about four different phases of consciousness. We talk about it as the victim consciousness, the victor consciousness, the vessel consciousness, and the verity consciousness. And right off the bat, we're all it, right? It goes through all of us, and it will go in waves through us at all, at all points in time. That's called being human. Uh, and I love the way uh, um, Michael Beckwith talked about these four phases of consciousness. The victim consciousness is really the consciousness of to me, right? Things happen to me. This stuff is happening to me. That other person is doing something to me. God is doing something to me. And I am simply the, the recipient of what is happening out there. It's all directed at me. That's the victim consciousness. And it's a dualistic consciousness because everything is located out there. And then there's the victor consciousness, with, which Beckwith calls by me. And those two, victim and victor consciousness, we, you know, we kind of flip-flop on those, right? Well, this person did this to me, but I'm going to do this, and I'm going to win. And that's the victor consciousness. Things are done by me. That's very egoic, right? It, it's, the, it's, the, it's the ego being in charge and saying, I'm going to do this, and I'm, I'm the winner. And if I'm the winner, what are all you? Hey, I didn't say it. <laughs> that was you. And then there's the vessel consciousness. And the vessel consciousness is where the ego says, well, wait a minute. There's this energy that I don't understand, and it's just coming through me. And that's the through me word that, that, that uh, Beckwith uses. It's coming through me. It's not me. It's coming through me. And that is also dualistic consciousness. It's better than being the victim victor, yeah? But we're still not owning our true self. We're still not owning that spark of divinity. We're not owning that divine consciousness. It's still a dualistic consciousness where we're, we're, and it can be egoic, you know. Hey, it wasn't me, but I'm the only one that could do it. So vessel is still, it's, it's allowing that energy to flow, but it's not taking ownership of it. It's not saying, yes, this is who I am. I'm, I'm authentic in it. And verity is our oneness consciousness. And Beck, Beckwith calls this the as-me consciousness. Where I'm living this expression of, of divine energy, and it is expressing as this eachness, which is me fully, and it's where my, my ego is still there because it's talking about it, but it's taking the back seat. It's now along for the ride. So this is how it shows up for me. I know when I'm in that state of consciousness is that I'm letting go of the efforting in life. Yes, there's still stuff for me to do. Yes, I still have my to-do list. I still have my goals. I still have to do laundry. I still have to feed the cats and clean the litter box. I, I still have to do all of those things in life. I, well, actually, I don't have to. Did you know? I don't have to do that. It's going to be pretty smelly in my house after a little while. But it's my choice. I choose to do that. And the way I know I'm in verity consciousness is that I just let go of the efforting and I do these things that, that are mine to do with ease and grace. And, I, and I, when, when there's a choice or a decision to be made, it's like Margot saying, I let go. Here I am, Lord. Show me the way. That divine consciousness is, is coming through me as me as I express it. And so it's affirmative prayer helps us get into that state of understanding, of knowing our oneness, knowing that the ocean is not separate from me. And in the same way, you and I are not separate. We're, we're one. 
And that's the verity consciousness. That's the asme consciousness. Now, unity offers a prayer practice, a prayer practice for us to, to move through. And there are many ways to achieve this uh, level of consciousness. And, and for me, it's a lot of it's through meditation and affirmative prayer and non-efforting. And I'm getting, and I get there. But here's the practice that we, that we offer. It's a five-step practice, and it begins with relaxation and release. Relaxation and release. So whatever you're, whatever you're thinking right now, whatever stress or strain you have, just relax and release it. That's not always an easy thing to do because that story keeps coming back up, right? So again, we bless it and we release it. We just allow it to drift away like clouds in the sky, not efforting, right? Not trying to wipe it away. Just say, oh, there it is. Notice it. It's like, oh, look at that pretty cloud. I'm just going to let it drift by. So it's a releasing and it's a relaxing. And then we move into the second step, which is meditation. And meditation takes many forms. The one that I like, I, I'll often you know, focus on my breath, a mindful breath meditation where I'm just focusing on the breath coming in, focusing on the breath going out. I might use an affirmation, I am at peace, I am a peaceful expression. So drawing in the love of the universe, expressing that in there. And we go into meditation until we get to the silence. The silence is the product of meditation when we stop thinking and we're just being. And we're being in the presence of the allness. And in the silence, and you may be in the silence for hours at a time, you may be in a silence for moments at a time, but when you touch that silence, there's an experience of, like the Daily Word said, free. It's like, ah. Oh, I'm there. Oh, that was my ego. I'm not there anymore. Go back into meditation. Now, the Fillmore's did this practice for hours at a time. Myrtle Fillmore did it for six hours a day, I think it was, as she was focusing on the healing energy of love flowing through her. And Charles Fillmore did it because he was the thinking guy because he wanted to figure it out, right? So he, he meditated for hours at a time. And, you know... I don't know, Fillmore said he got answers through sleep. I don't know if that, that means he fell asleep during the meditation. I don't think it matters. Let me just say that. But after the silence, when you're at that state of consciousness, verity consciousness, comes affirmative prayer. We are affirming the truth of who you are. It's that simple. Affirming the truth of who you are. Not affirming what's lacking in your life, not wishing for more stuff, because that's coming from a place of lack, but seeking first the kingdom of God, as the master teacher said, which is oneness. And then all things are added unto you. So allowing that oneness just to be, and allowing that to guide you through your life, through every day. How would your life be different if before that meeting, before that difficult conversation with that someone, where you got into that state of consciousness first? and then approached the conversation. Would it be a little different? And then the fifth step in affirmative prayer, the five-step process, is gratitude. Having a felt sense of gratitude. Thank you. And all things will be added unto you. Eric Butterworth said this, you have the allness of the infinite process of God ever within you. Spirit is always there, flowing. That energy is always moving. And it is his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It's all present. And all you need to do is throw the switch. Is say yes. Just to practice it. Just to accept it. And then to be as it. So affirmative prayer is being in the state of oneness consciousness. And affirmatively praying with others is holding that principle, that truth, with someone. It's just holding that consciousness because we're all one, so you can hold that consciousness for another one. Even if they can't. Even if they're somewhere in victim or victor or verity consciousness or wherever, wherever they're at, and we're all going to get there, yeah? 
So it's not just, you, you know, it, it's being the, with the intention of being more present and being that affirmative uh, peace for them. So praying with someone is being the presence of love with another as they release their concerns. Praying with someone is being a tuning fork for another as they begin to focus their mind. It is holding a oneness consciousness with another without any judgment, without any dialogue, just holding that consciousness. And it is affirming truth with one another. And by truth, we mean the truth of their being. Not the little t, which is you know, based on complete story and fiction but the truth of their being. And then finally, praying with another is, affirmatively praying with another, is giving thanks with one, with one another. So you can be in that state of gratitude, be in that state of awareness. How may I pray with you? Does that give it a little different feeling? How may I pray with you? It is a sacred, sacred experience for those who have done it. And of course, they say when you pray with someone, you're also praying for yourself. How may I pray with you? This is the centerpiece and the sacred work of the prayer ministry here at Unity Palo Alto. Your prayer requests that come in online or in our prayer chest are held in sacred space and prayed for, prayed, I pray with you in it throughout the month and then I send it to Silent Unity where it, where it is held in prayer space for another 30 days. Affirming, they don't read it, they just affirm because there's no need to read it. The universe already knows. And today, we are blessed as a spiritual community because today we are expanding our prayer uh, ex- ministry here with the prayer chaplain installation and dedication ceremony.